one. Welcome everybody to this uh, wonderful Stay Engaged session. We have an incredible uh, set of panelists, um, speakers, thinkers, dare I say, modern day philosophers wielding business as a tool for uh, good and change. So I'm really excited about this session. Um, it's part of a series in which we're, we're staying engaged as entrepreneurs uh, in New Mexico because now is a time where we we, we really need to rise up and create the solutions that are, are needed. And um, now more than ever, uh, we've always been needed, but now we're extra specially needed. Um, so Dan Heron and I and uh, a few of my compatriots at uh, ABQID powered by CNM Ingenuity are really happy to, to put this on and, and facilitate some wonderful discussion today. Um, our desire is that it's super valuable for you and your business. And when I say your business, we have an incredibly diverse set of people here. We got some nonprofit folks, we got some for profit folks, we got some government folks, and that's really reflected in our uh, panelists today as well. Um, and I find that's when great innovation really happens when you get people talking who usually don't, or uh, for whatever reason, right? So, um, Today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have a, a fire cider, as I've now dubbed it with my cool New Mexico United flag, uh, flag side chat with some wonderful people. I'll introduce uh, to you who they are here in a second. That'll be 30 or 40 minutes. And then we're gonna take about 20 minutes. And uh, Dan, I think groups of four today to um, have you meet each other, um, uh, set, set you up with, different panelists um, will be represented in the different groups or do a little bit different than we have in the past, but it will be a chance basically for you to, uh, for your voice to be heard, for you to meet a few new people, uh, hopefully, especially with today's audience, it's gonna be a great chance to, to brush shoulders, if you will, with some people you may probably haven't met before um, or even heard of. And this incredible group assembled here. And uh, like Dan said at the beginning, um, as it's gotten buried as people started to introduce themselves. Uh, one, two, up to three lines here in the chat box of who you are, what your startup or website is, and what you're working on um, would be great to hear. So we can kind of all get more familiar past the, past the Zoom faces and names of who's here. So 30 or 40 minutes of the flag side chat, and then about 20 minutes of breakout rooms. And then you're gonna have your chance to ask uh, questions of uh, one or all of our panelists and I'll facilitate that Q&A and that'll take us to about 12 p.m. today. So we plan to be highly interactive, highly informative, dare I say inspiring today and uh, hopefully you leave with some really killer ideas and resources for your business. So with us today uh, we have some amazing people. Um, John Mertz is the founder of Santa Fe Innovate. So so people can match your face and name, John, just wave here. Um, he's gonna be talking a little bit about, uh, well, a lot about B Corps. Um, he's a 25 year tech and marketing exec executive. He led brand development, product management and marketing, lead generation and sales channel efforts for entrepreneurial and enterprise companies um, from CorePoint Health to Deloitte to IBM. Uh, he founded Activate World so we think we're cool with Activate New Mexico. He founded Activate World, so, uh, which is a modern think tank on CEO and employee activism. And most recently, Santa Fe, Santa Fe innovates a social entrepreneur accelerator community. Um, John, we're so happy to have you. Great to be here, joining thank us, you. Joining us as well as Sandra McCardo. She is coordinating director of Cooperative Catalyst of New Mexico. And Eva Seidelman is with her. I hope I got your last name right, Eva, but Eva, why don't you wave as well so people know you're, you're also with Co-op Catalyst. Um, Sandra specifically co-founded a national cooperative of micro businesses in the energy efficiency business, which operated as a purchasing and marketing cooperative for several years. So she's had real hands-on experience with the model she'll talk about. She has assisted a cooperative network of international agencies working on alternative energy in Afghanistan and founded and developed the New Mexico Statewide Green Jobs Collaborative. So um, 
really deep in it, very experienced. Uh, and Eva, I think we've talked before and we're really excited to be um, promoting what you all are working on and, and getting your take on the movement as it were. Um, last but not least, we have Johanna Nelson who is the Strategic Program Development Coordinator for the State of, uh, State of New Mexico Economic Development Department. Um, she's been in economic development for over a decade uh, as a business development advisor and financial specialist. She's a certified economic developer through the International Economic Development Council and just finished a fellowship with the Council of Development Finance Authorities. Um, she currently operates a small business in her spare time, your copious spare time, I'm assuming, right, Joanna? Um, these days, um, I know she's been, like, like many of us, really uh, burning the midnight oil helping businesses uh, through a variety of resources, which she'll talk about. Um, so happy to have you. Okay, so make sure you smile so everybody can search through and find you. Um, by the way, a little pro tip here. I like the gallery view. That's the, there's a little icon where you can see more faces. But for today, especially, if you want to see who's presenting, um, you want to switch to presenter view so that when, when I hand the mic to them, they'll, you'll be able to kind of uh, really focus on what they're saying, feel like you're meeting them. Um, what are we talking about today? Well, we are living in unprecedented times. And it behooves us to, to take a step back. Um, one, one of the adages we're always talking about in Activate New Mexico and our portfolio companies that we have is ABQID fund is working on the business, not just in the business, right? Um, in the Stay Engaged series, we're hoping that we, we help us entrepreneurs think at that level of how should I be doing business, not, what, not just what type of business do I want to be doing. And let's face it, there's a good question uh, in the root question, is capitalism working or not? I'm a, I'm a listener of Intelligence Squared Debates and that was essentially one of the questions that, that was posed by a, a panelist is capitalism has been a blessing. And it's a really interesting contention. Um, if you don't listen to that podcast, I highly recommend it. I'm not getting paid to endorse it. Um, it's Intelligence Squared Debates. And uh, there's, there's a lot to say on both sides. Um, we have growing income inequality. We have, uh, at least in some sectors of the capital community, a growth at all cost uh, mentality, if not behavior. Um, there are many externalities happening. There's lots of contact with workers associated with these things. And many people for many years have been asking, uh, is there better is there better permutations of this? Is there a better way to get back to uh, back to work and back to business um, that will fundamentally uh, solve some of these problems we're seeing in capitalism? So I'm here to facilitate, but I'm also here to learn too because I run a privately held pri uh, venture capital fund, and a lot a lot is said in and about venture capital, and it's it's. Uh, important time for me to be a listener and for all of you as entrepreneurs um, to be inspired and challenged to think about how to build your business, not just what business to build. So that's kind of the preface that led us all together. And uh, my operative question for each of our panelists is what, what, what have you been working on that you're really excited about um, in regards to that question, business that solves some of the core problems, not just good business, but um, good impact through the business. Um, and to get me not talking and get the panelists talking, we're going to hand it over to uh, John first. Um, so John, that's the question. Um, given your amazing background, working with so many great companies, um, large and small, uh, how did you land at Santa Fe Innovates and specifically this social enterprise movement, B Corporations? Illuminate us a little bit why you're, why you're excited about that model and what it is and what it means for entrepreneurs and how we should think about it, all that good stuff. Uh, absolutely, and thank you, TJ. Um, it's great to be part of this, uh, uh, part of this community. Um, so I think you, you, you alluded to it in your intro. I mean, there's a lot of conversation going on whether 
capitalism is uh, doing the right things in the right ways today. And just uh, this week, there was a survey uh, I saw that said that, you know, 75% of Americans don't believe that capitalism is working. But on the bright side, that almost 90% say it's time to fix it. And so the good news is there's some uh, organizations that have been promoting um, a different way to run a business and lead a business. Um, and two of those ways have been uh, social entrepreneurship and social enterprises. And unfortunately, I guess maybe the industry uh, kind of sets it up a little bit confusingly on some of the definitions. But the way we look at social entrepreneurship is that it's a for-profit way uh, to solve a, a social issue. And um, there's ways to do that. It can be embedded as part of the, the actual business model of the startup or the company. Um, or it could be set up where there's a separate foundation uh, in parallel to uh, the organization in which they contribute part of their profits or revenue into that foundation and they do the good work uh, through, through that means. Um, the good news also is, I guess, is there's a lot of different ways to um, think about social entrepreneurship. If you haven't looked at the, the UN's uh, Sustainable Development Goals, you know, they let, outline, I think, about 17 different areas that are kind of focus areas around that. And so, you know, as you're thinking about ideas um, or ways to make a difference, uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals are, is a good place to, to start. Um, the other side is benefit corporations and B Corps. And again, they make it a little bit confusing. Um, but, uh, you know, in essence, uh, there's kind of an and or either or uh, type of approach to that. But what benefit corporations do is uh, also a kind of embed a broader perspective into how to run your business. And in uh, New Mexico, uh, uh, we just passed uh, earlier this year. Uh, the ability to now incorporate as a benefit corporation. Ooh. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a it didn't actually expect it to happen this legislative session, but it was, it was <laughs> wonderful to see that it did. And so now companies uh, located here can, and it's up and uh, running. Uh, so you can now either change or start as a benefit corporation. Prior to this, what some companies did, like Meow Wolf and some others, is that they uh, incorporate as a benefit corporation and and. Uh, Delaware. Uh, but then the second part is they also then pursued uh, the B Corp certification. And so it's really a, a business decision. You can just uh, do the benefit corporation uh, side of it and the uh, certification or one or the other. But the certification is, is a good process, especially I think for a startup. We just went through it um, and, you know, have a kind of a provisional uh, certification process that gives some leeway to startups. Uh, they don't expect you to be certified uh, from the beginning. But you know, it really uh, challenges you to think about your business and your startup you know, across different categories. So where mm -hmm. they focus the certification on is things from governance uh, to your workers or your employees, your team members, uh, your community, um, the environment, uh, customers. And then the other element is just kind of the disclosure uh, statements that get around kind of your articles of incorporation and, and just how you're going kind of relating back to a certain degree back to governance. And so I think it's, you know, it can be overwhelming uh, speaking from experience and uh, diving into the certification process. But um, as I said, it, it gives you as an entrepreneur really think more broadly about how you want to make a difference in how you're building your company as well as how you want to make a difference in the communities that you serve. Hmm. So what I heard you saying is um, to, to encapsulate it, John, that social enterprise, which is a for-profit with also a nonprofit arm, they're, they're two different entities, but they're very tightly integrated such right. that the profit from the for-profit goes to fund the impact work of the nonprofit, uh, which can also receive grants in its mm -hmm. own right, which is, fantastic right because a for-profit right. usually cannot um but there's some complexities there because now you're on paper at least running two organizations uh the b corporation you stay one one organization but um your bylaws change if you're a benefit corporation or even a certified b corporation you have to change your bylaws from we're here to make money to we're here to make money social change environmental progress you know 
basically right. it, it puts it all on the same level so that um, at the board level, at, at the organizational level, everybody's on the same page about what we're doing. And you can't, yeah. you can't make those decisions in the boardroom just for profit. So did I get that right? Uh, absolutely. In fact, you know, in our own experience, because um, we incorporated Santa Fe Innovates, we did as a C Corp because at that point, Benefit Corporation wasn't an option. And so when we went through the process to begin the certification, you know, we had to modify as best we could our bylaws to meet both New Mexico state law as well as the B Corp uh, certification requirements. Uh, incorporating as a benefit corporation, and we're, we're going to be switching to that. Like you said, you know, it incorporates from the beginning in your bylaws that you have some kind of social purpose or environmental purpose as part of your company and that you're not running it not just for shareholder value, that the directors of your company uh, understand that there's more of a stakeholder. Capitalism is another popular term that you may read about in, in the press, um, but it's looking at more than just shareholders. It's looking at communities, employees. Um, partners um, and so on as part of uh, how you're going to lead and manage your business. No, no, we'll have everybody listening. We'll have Q and A, so you can ask some questions too. I think one of the questions I'm, I'm through my ESP, uh, everybody on the phone is like, "Well, should I do that?" You know. So at the earliest stage, I know you incorporate Santa Fe Innovates um, as as a B Corp, like you mentioned, um, or sorry, as a Sorry, you, you said you did it as a C Corp because B Corp wasn't available yet. Right. right. If I'm a, if I'm just started and I, I've got my LLC, and I'm going, I'm doing that, and I'm not sure if my business has traction yet. Um, should I be thinking about starting a nonprofit arm? Is this a good time to start a nonprofit arm too? Because I think in the future I'm going to want to do that. Or would you? What What would your kind of general framework for decision making be in terms of inspiring our audience here who might be sure thinking about how to how to how to go about pursuing that or not yeah i mean it's obviously challenging as a as an entrepreneur or startup especially in the early days you know not to um go too broad as far as uh, where you spend your time because you're just trying to get a try to figure out a new venture and and what's the best way to launch that and so um so if, if uh social entrepreneurship maybe is not part of your uh business model um you know Thinking ahead is always good. So if you do want to have a, a, a bigger purpose outside of just uh, making a profit, thinking about that um, and how you you would uh, uh, incorporate that either as a foundation or some other way is definitely something I think that you should think about early on. Uh, not necessarily you have to take action on, but at least kind of a, from a vision perspective, you're thinking about that. But the you know the you know the number one thing I would encourage you to do would be is to you know get involved with the B community um, and look at the certification process and just uh, sign up, create an account. You don't have to go through the certification. Um, creating your own account and looking through the criteria is all free. Um, and I think again, as I mentioned earlier on, it gives you as a founder. A way to think more broadly about your startup and how to do the right th right things throughout uh, those different categories, and so I think it it challenges you to to um, uh, raise up your leadership <laughs> and think more broadly about your startup. <clears throat> That's great. Yeah, I my previous company we were talking about this before we started the session, but what became certified as a B corporation after years of being a uh, C corp. Uh, it was quite the process. It was illuminating. It was deeply challenging. Um, it's, it reminded me of when I was studying in England in my highest grade, I got on any assignment. It was like a 72. They said, oh, that's normal. We don't do A's and stuff around here. We Basically, they're so pessimistic. Everybody's basically at the C level, or, and that's the best you get. Um, yeah, and that, it, it feels like just... that. Oh, sorry. We, we barely scraped by with 82 out of 200. I don't, I don't know yeah. if that, that's... Well, that's, that's why, yeah, I was going to say, but, yeah, kind of the, the, the score level. I mean, 82 is, the, you know, the minimum to get certified and start <clears throat> max. And obviously, I don't think anybody's... I know nobody's at uh, 200. I know a local company here, Falling Colors, they just completed their certification. And I think they're at a little over 130 points. And so, um, you know, it's... You know that's great because they're doing a lot, a lot of good things, and they're also a model where, you know, they have a separate foundation that uh, they support a lot of different community activities too. 
-hmm. but um, but you're right. Yeah, you don't have to get uh, you know 180 points to be certified. And, you know, 80 will will get you there. Yeah, and it's deeply challenging. It, I, it did truly build some awareness of questions to ask I haven't even asked before as a CEO, which mm -hmm. is always fantastic and humbling. Uh, last question before I, I kick it over to Sandra, who's going to talk more on the cooperative side in all its many forms, is is pragmatic, dare I say opportunistic. <clears throat> what what have you seen in terms of the, the rationale for doing this or one of the rationale for doing this, better connection with customers, better traction with the type of customers you're wanting to meet, and the business, the business side reasons for doing this? Do you you think that should be part of the calculus um, or is that not as important as as kind of like the stakeholders, your, your board, the governance, how you want to run the company? Or do you see direct, have you seen direct benefit <clears throat> being incorporated in this way as a way to reach the customers you want to reach better? Yeah, I think there's a, I'd say there's probably three ways to look at it. So one is uh, I would, you know, focus on the governance. Uh, side of things. So whether it's a social uh, enterprise or a benefit corporation, you know, getting the governance right, uh, I think as an early startup is important. It's going to keep you on the right ethical path and, and hopefully help you make the right decisions as the different challenges and tensions are inevitably going to arise. Uh, second area, I think, you know, through the benefit corporation, you take that route with the, and get certified, you know, they have a B community marketplace. And so it's a way to differentiate and, and highlight your business. And I know from my standpoint, uh, I've gone to that marketplace and looked for businesses, whether it's web development or other products, just to see what companies um, are in their marketplace mm -hmm. that I can spend my money with rather than one that's maybe just focused on uh, shareholder value only. And um, so I think, you know, there's, you know, different ways to look at it. And the other, the third way is really you know, there's a, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed, there's a generational shift happening and millennials and Gen Z fully expect business to be a platform for change. And so if your business is not aligning to that, uh, you're going to miss out on those millennial and Gen Z customers uh, because that's their expectation and the way they're going to start businesses, but also the businesses that they're going to spend their money with. Pardon, uh, pardon the yeah, disruption. I, uh, muted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, muted TJ on accident, so let me unmute him. Sorry, TJ. No, keeping the mute. TJ, uh, TJ's party foul. I was trying not to cough in everybody's ears, but uh, it's muscle memory. Um, that's awesome. John. I, a lot more questions. A lot more. A um, lot more good stuff here. I think some of our activate companies are asking. What about investors? How do investors feel about all this? Um, but let's let's move to Sandra now because I think what she says will will uh, will beg a few other questions similarly. Um, Sandra, same same big question, right? But what what are the models that you are really excited about vis-a-vis -vis, um, this change that we're going through? This change, I'd say, was accelerated by the coronavirus and other kind of civil discourse. Um, unrest conversations happening where more people than ever before are thinking about change um, and, and building awareness for it. You, you have a rich experience set with cooperatives. Can you educate us a little bit about uh, the, the different models and modalities thereof and why you're so passionate about it to start with? Absolutely. Um, I'd like to start on a more general um, idea if that uh, if that's okay. You know, I grew up believing that business was a good thing and that um, business was and should be a course for or an approach to strengthening communities, um, positive success, and so on. So when I graduated from college, the first thing I did was go to work for General Motors. It was a good way to show that perhaps not all businesses were, um, were formed in that way. And yet I think there is, 
going back to some of the things that John said, we need to work together, whether it is the government, the nonprofit sector, the business sector, we need to figure out how to work together because this change that is upon us, which has been exacerbated by all the things that have happened over the past few months, it's kind of, it's kind of focused on everything as a challenge, but it's, it's part of a long-term trend. Businesses have been pursuing capitalism at all costs. Um, and they're one proof of that. I sit on the board of a group called the American Sustainable Business Council. And last fall, we had a, a, a conference called Making Capitalism Work for All. So at that time, last fall, we thought, you know, we can do this. We can make capitalism work for all. Well, now if you look at the ASBC website, um, there's a comment that there is no going back. Our current system of capitalism does not work for most Americans. And it quotes uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Stephen Perlstein, who said, our economic system has run off the moral rails, offending our sense of fairness, eroding our sense of community, poisoning our politics, and rewarding values that easily degenerate into greed and difference. So the change was, let's create an economy that works for all. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's, a, that's an important distinction. A lot of the, the points that John made are similar for cooperatives. You know, there has been a, um, there's a, there's a tension between, are we going to do good while we're doing well? Which means mm -hmm. we're focusing on what is important to us as the, the corporation, um, or are we going to do well by doing good? And so there are different people who fall into different camps and different organizations that fall into different camps. Mm -hmm. the, um, one of the main challenges, um, which I think both of you referred to, is the, is the challenge of externalities. So if I define my job as only doing these three things right, like giving my shareholders significant profits on a quarterly basis, and that's it. Um, and, and keeping my top executives in their homes. Um, you know, that's, that's a pretty easy bar. So what B Corps do, what cooperatives do, is try to expand and include externalities. And in the cooperative side, those extra externalities are the people who own the corporate, own the, the organization, the communities and others. It's true for B Corps as well. So you just have to expand the universe <coughs> of who of those who are important. And that is our joint challenge, no matter what um, business format we, we use. Mm -hmm. So what's the Maybe just structurally speaking, um, maybe illuminate us on what what is the structure of a co-op, whether it's employee owned, whether it's customer owned, maybe what's the landscape there, informal versus formal? Sure. So the, um, the three main things with a cooperative is that you need to know who owns the organization. Is it the shareholders? Um, or is it the stakeholders? And this is something that John alluded to as well. The stakeholders are, are potentially everybody who cares about that organization. Um, and in a cooperative sense, those who are members who provide the work tend to be seen um, as more important because they provide labor than those who provide the financing. Not always, often, um, with, with apologies for the venture capital folk in the room. 
just because uh, I learned to, I learned the term vulture capitalist that we'll ignore that piece. Yeah. Um, and then I think another question is who makes the decisions? Is it the membership that makes the decisions or is it the board? If you look at, um, if you look at your standard corporate structure, it is a triangle with um, the CEO at the top moving down to those who work there. Cooperative kind of flips that. And so the CEO or manager reports to, um, through a structure generally up to those who are members. And that kind of leads to a third point, which is why does this organization exist? It exists because the members decide to create it in this way to provide benefits that they desire. What might those be? If it's a group of <coughs> citizens, people who, um, who have been through the prison system, they might need to include visits with their parole officers as something that is permissible on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever it is. So they can structure the organization to do that. So it's kind of, it, it's kind of looking at what people want. Um, the, um, their most cooperatives, whether formal or informal, and anything can operate in a, any organization can operate in a cooperative manner, share um, various principles, and various values. The cooperative principles, I'm just gonna read through quickly, um, are open and voluntary membership, democratic <coughs> member control, members economic participation, autonomy and independence, education, training and information, cooperation among cooperatives, and concern for community. So as you listen to those, you can hear that they're not very different from some of the things that John was talking about, but it is a different structure. Um, I won't go through the values at this point, but um, <coughs> but they are, you know, just we're, we're all in this together and we all need to contribute. Yeah, uh, that Dan just made a point in chat I wanted to enumerate. Um, there's so much to learn about cooperatives, the different models. Um, you at Cooperative Catalyst are a resource, and that's that's why we love matching some faces to names, because if people now reach out, they'll know they'll be reaching out to you and Eva. Um, I, one, one last question before um, we go over to Johanna is, um, on the whole, kind of like this framework for help me as an entrepreneur think about my business, what types of business are, you know, kind of just organically very well suited operative uh, structures versus uh, those that you're going to probably have a tougher time um, building a cooperative around it? Or indeed, can every business uh, think about itself in a more cooperative way? What's your take on that? Or maybe share an example, perhaps. Sure. Um, I think, I think <coughs> TJ's and Dan are going to send out um, slide decks that we have, but um, and I have some examples in there. But the ones that you folks probably know about locally would be La Montanita um, and REI. Both of those are cooperatives. The, um, there are also some very large ones. There are many manufacturing cooperatives, um, engineering cooperatives, uh, a lot of agricultural cooperatives. Um, and um, there are also accelerators which help cooperatives scale up in a, in a rapid way. The, um, they kind of fall into two, they're different types depending on who are the members. And then they also fall into service industries and manufacturing industries. If you're a manufacturing industry, denizen, um, you will do, you will form a cooperative for a different reason, which might be that you have a lot of equipment that is very costly and you want to have that shared. So that might be a cost-focused reason to form a cooperative. If you're in a service industry, 
you might have a situation where the individuals have low wages and want to increase those. So if they band together and work as a group through um, either pressure or developing a better, um, better mousetrap, they may be able to raise their wages up. So, um, and those are only two examples. There are many other ways. Yeah. So. Fantastic. Um, I, and there, it, we're not talking mutually exclusive either, B corporation versus cooperatives. A cooperative can be a B corporation, et cetera. So right. that, I wanted to put a pin in that as a conversation point, but um, this, this what's a bunch of people's appetites for probably wanting to know more. <clears throat> we're gonna get to um, our breakouts and the operative question we're gonna ask will be, how might this apply to your business? How are you thinking about it for your business? So to, to spur some conversation, but um, Sandra, thank you very much as a, as, a, as a dip into the cooperative model and the reasons for it. And I think if ever there's a time, the timeliness of this conversation, um, you put a pin in that and I appreciate that. Um, before we go to breakout rooms, we want to meet our third panelist, who is Johanna Nelson at State EDD. And um, uh, so, yeah, Johanna, I, I know you're, you're, your take on this question will be a little bit different, but I do want to pose it to you. Um, what are you excited about in terms of these different and alternative business models? And um, how is the state uh, thinking about supporting them? And indeed, what, what kind of resources should we as all entrepreneurs um, be aware of in terms of the resources available to us as we engage in this post-COVID and uh, uh, important time? So we'll kick it over to you with that loaded question. <laughs> no, you said that we had an hour and a half to talk, right? <laughs> uh, uh, no. uh, just kidding. Um, so very, yeah, very loaded question. Um, but we are in, in really interesting times. And um, I think we're seeing a shift in government and public bodies role. And we're seeing government and, and public bodies really step up in, in interesting ways, especially uh, under the leadership that, that we're currently under right now. Um, you're seeing, seeing some folks really step up and um, forming some really interesting um, relationships. And um, second, I think my, my kids are coming in at a really, here, hold on. Hello, hold on. children. Hello. Okay. Um, right when I started talking, too. That's, that's, um, the, that's the thing, right? Murphy's Law. <laughs> um, so, what you asked how the government is, is being able to support, and I think that, that that is key, because right now, I know within the, the Economic Development Department, we are really seeing a need to step up in terms of a platform, in showing the connections that we have between organizations and the resources that kind of funnel through the department. And, and I tend to focus on financial resources. And what happens a lot, whether it's um, due to regional um, challenges or you, know, you might be located in Gallup versus you're located in Albuquerque or Las Cruces or, or wherever, um, people pretty much get their information from from silos almost and so I'm really seeing a need to as a state offer um, a platform that we can bring resources and information and awareness around uh, programs and organizations that can help businesses um, to all, all, all um, regions of the state and I think Loser. A wrap up of um, news articles that we're seeing not only statewide but um, nationally, webinars, uh, as well as um, uh, resources that are out there, financial programs that's state, federal, and, and, and national. That's one way we're trying to get the, the information out. We're doing uh, weekly webinars. Next week we have a webinar on the, the SBA PPP 
um, extensions that were just made last week. And um, I think that there, as we're moving forward, we're seeing a lot of opportunity to build out additional networks, um, provide more communication, improve our communication in, in getting these resources out to folks. So to me, that's, that's really exciting because so often, especially being a state worker in the public realm, you see uh, agencies, and I'm just going to use um, Department of Environment for an example. Um, they have some really exciting <coughs> programs, but not a lot of people know about the brownfields funding that's that's available to to rehab certain properties and um i don't think that government has a tendency to excel at creating engaging um, communication around resources and so i think that this is a, there's a huge need um and and we're really trying to step up and and get the word out about all the the resources that are out there. So um, that's one way I, I see them stepping up and see us stepping up. That's great. Um, appreciate it. it. It's hard work what, what you're doing uh, to to uh, herd the cats, I think is one expression, right? In terms of all the stuff that's going on. But um, maybe, maybe just for kind of that on the ground um, perspective you have at, at your level, you have this interesting perspective of uh, who's accessing what, what resources you feel are maybe most under tapped. Can you, and we'll, we'll have your slides, we'll share those, we'll share web, websites so people can get, uh, dig in for themselves, but kind of from your perspective, we're three months plus into this coronavirus uh, academic, um, epidemic and our response to it. What, what do you want entrepreneurs to know more about? You feel like there's a lack of awareness of, or, or what have you seen on, on the contrary, um, be the, the most um, uh, valuable tool for entrepreneurs during this time? I think that <clears throat> what, what I just mentioned in terms of our ability to have this statewide perspective, as you just, you just highlighted, we are seeing this kind of macro picture of, of the funding opportunities and of the resources that are available. And really trying to bring awareness that as entrepreneurs now more than ever is the time to be connected and even just your your immediate network that you're used to reaching out to whether it's abqid or, or activate or um, sbdc's really pushing outward and maybe even getting uncomfortable contacting different organizations you don't normally communicate because there's so much coming online right now in terms of assistance and opportunities and it's overwhelming i mean even at a state level i am really struggling with um trying to map and, and that's something that we're engaged with right now is trying to map all of the different resources that are out there um, I can't imagine someone that is new to this or isn't aware that there's, you know, 300 plus entrepreneurial support organizations just in Albuquerque alone, how to keep tabs on all of that. So um, the biggest piece of advice is to, to reach out to us, um, to reach out to, to numerous organizations and, and really pan the the spectrum and and see what's available cast a really big net right now because there is i mean not only statewide not only regionally there's there's a lot of of stuff out there um that is geared toward helping businesses right now so it, it's yeah. very overwhelming yeah, it's overwhelming and it's hard it's hard to just map because and because that map becomes static the moment it gets yes, published so exactly. i hear you saying it's about relationship reaching mm -hmm. out um, uh, and we're, we're all embodying that by being on a call like this today. So kudos to all of us and all of you for, for, uh, for being part of community. I think community is, is hugely important to be, be a meta cooperative of sorts here in New Mexico and be stronger all together. Huge message, but, um, I hope you all see that Joanna is very approachable, very giving of her time and, and will will her and her team, <clears throat> she and her team will will hustle on your behalf. Um, that's what we, all of us exist for, to help you succeed. So do reach out. Um, the, the worst thing you could do is feel like you're asking a dumb question or, you know, be not sure if you should reach out to this entity. And so you don't, 
we'll route you. We'll, we'll do our part to, to get you connected. Um, speaking of getting connected, thank you, Johanna. I think we're, we're ready to, uh, to interact together. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over back to Dan, but this is the time where you're gonna meet a few people, talk about what you're up to, try to apply the flag side chat and cooperatives and B Corp social enterprise to how you think about your business or organization, or even if it's just an idea stage thing you thought about. Um, meet a few cool people, uh, spend a few minutes with them, and then we'll come back for some Q&A with our panelists. So Dan, please uh, explain what's about to happen, especially for those who haven't had this breakout room experience before. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, panelists. Um, so in the group chat, uh, yeah, we're gonna really encourage you to turn on your camera and participate. If you can't, you need to drop off, no worries. Um, feel free to do that. Uh, I have put you all into breakout rooms and there is kind of a focus question that we would like everyone to start, you know, kind of kick off the conversation with, which is, you know, how do some of these alternative bid structures and models that you've heard about or resources that you've heard about apply to your business? And uh, if you have some additional time after kind of that key focus question, um, you know, what entrepreneurial opportunities are you thinking or working about right now? Because I know sometimes uh, we don't all know everyone in the room. So I'm going to break you out into uh, small groups and then uh, feel free to go around. Again, it's going to go super quick. So I'm going to ask that everyone try their best to, you know, keep it to their elevators pitch uh, rather than, uh, you know, take the whole time for one person. So um, if someone doesn't respond, no worries. Uh, if something goes wrong, you'll have a button that says leave breakout room. You're welcome to come back to the main thread and uh, you can talk with me in the main thread or I can reassign you to a new breakout room. Um, other than that, I think most of us are familiar with breakout rooms. You're gonna go out into a separate breakout room uh, and have a private conversation in small groups. And then like TJ said, we'll come back to the main room uh, near the end, closer to noon. Uh, and just kind of wrap up, do a couple Q and A, uh, and that, that will be it. Okay. Um, with that being said, I am going to push you all out into breakout rooms. There will be a um, uh, a little dialogue box that pops up and says "Join Breakout Room," so you'll click that. Okay. All right. Have a great breakout. Talk to you soon. Apparently I haven't added you all into your own room yet. So let me see how I can get you to join in a room. You should have a button that says join room, several of you. Recording resumed. Hello, everybody. Welcome Did back. You meet some cool people, make some good connections. Uh, my encouragement is always uh, make sure if, as is the case with us entrepreneurial folks, we get cut off talking because Dan with his godlike abilities pulls us back because he loves to wield the power. Uh, if you didn't get able chance to connect with that person and say, I would like to follow up with you. Um, let's set a time. Use the chat function as I'm blabbing right now to kind of pick out that person and say, hey, yeah, let's follow up. Here's my email address or, or cell phone, if you will, whatever modality you'd like to be contacted with and uh, make the connection. Um, incredible stuff going on through uh, the people and panelists that came today, but all of you are doing incredible things in your own right. So um, just great energy and uh, love, love making the connections for everybody. All right, so at this time, um, I know there's one question I'll, I'll, I'll address since I am in the VC side of things, um, but if anybody has um,
specific questions for any of the panelists, uh, type it out in the chat and uh, I'll be watching that and I'll, I'll, I'll run traffic for the, the Q&A um, for the next really five or six minutes. Don't have tons of time, but um, one of the questions that was asked that I'll address while Dan puts that in, you all put your questions in is, um, how does VC look at B corporations um, or angels, outside investors looking for financial investments to make? How do they look at B Corps? They smile at them, they frown at them. Um, my, my, my basic answer to that question is um, your, your investors, your, st your financial stakeholders will want to see the, the financials of the business, the market you're serving. This ask it's the exact same questions they would ask of any company. Um, is the team strong? Is the market uh, large underserved? Is the technology or product or service you're, you're um, working on scalable? Um, all those questions. And um, there, there's probably a, still a number of uh, venture capitalists, investors who would say B Corp, that's gonna add complexity, things like that. But for the most part, um, I think the savvy ones will respect, if not uh, condone, uh, that bringing that alignment in structurally. Um, and there are investors that specifically um, are in and around the B Corp community, for example, um, who, who want to fund B corporations. But I think the, the big question any investor asks first and foremost is, um, is this a great business? You know, are you going to do something spectacular in the world that hasn't been done before? And, um, and therefore is it a, is it a, is he going to present an opportunity for financial return? Um, there are those who will say no, I think maybe based on B Corporation because they don't want the, um, they don't want the, these are use for them. Is will sustainability. Right. Did uh, TJ cut out for anyone else, or is it just me? I see a I lot of head. Yeah, I yeah. can't. I can't, hear, I, I can't hear TJ at all. All right. We lost TJ. Uh, I shot the facilitator. I guess I'm taking over. <laughs> That's good. DJ likes to make full issues. Yeah, time, yeah, I got power I, issues. I shot, the, yeah. I shot the sheriff. Yeah, <laughs> I shot, but I did not. Uh, anyways, um, so there was one question that was proposed a little bit earlier uh, by Adam, and that was I wrote it in here or I pasted it in here, and it was really about you know. Uh, for I think it's predominantly John, maybe Eva, as well as uh, Sandra, is there any advice on kind of the solopreneurs? We got a lot of solopreneurs, right? That's how we start these ventures. But how does a solopreneur um, relate to, you know, B Corps or corporations, um, uh, you know, for those that have either a solopreneur or a single member LLC? Um, John, you might uh, kind of take that one first and then we can pass it on. Sure. Yeah, I think from a certification standpoint, it might be a little challenging as a solopreneur to get certified, but I think it's still valuable to look at the criteria. And like I mentioned, you can create a, a, an account uh, at no cost and look at some of the criteria. But I think, it, you know, I would emphasize, I guess, that as a solopreneur, there's always the opportunity to get involved in your community. And um, whether it's a local uh, city or state, or if, you know, if you're so inspired to get involved in a national or global issue, you know, that's important too. So whether you're one person or a, a team of people, uh, there's definitely a way to make your voice heard and, and get involved uh, actively within your uh, community and, and uh, make a difference. Sandra, Eva, any, any comments about the solopreneur question? Let me just uh, let me just add in a quick thing, and then Eva may have some other uh, comments as well. But the um, 
the cooperative that I originally started, that's exactly what we were. We were a group of solopreneurs um, in, uh, throughout the U.S. And uh, because we were solopreneurs, our purchasing costs were absurd and our marketing costs equally so. So we started um, at the beginning as a group of solopreneurs just trying to work as a group to drive down our sourcing costs and also to drive down our marketing costs. And then we expanded into um, working, working together in a variety of other ways. So we, came, we became a cooperative after that, but that was the impetus was we're all in the same business. We, uh, our margins are absurd. Let's find a way to fix it. Yeah, it, it's, I was gonna use a similar, a number of similar other examples of solopreneurs, you know, getting together and forming a co-op for those needs, or maybe there's some other need um, that they can jointly work together to fulfill or pool resources to fulfill. And the one that I keep thinking about is most, of, a lot of you work in tech, but people who want to use tech more, but, you know, don't, don't necessarily want to be controlled by some other app, like maybe they want to have their own app, their own platform all together um, and control it together. So a number of small solopreneurs that want to do that, I think would be a great idea for a co-op. Thanks. Um, Ken asked the big kid question about, you know, ta tackling and iterating on capitalism, which I don't think we, we have time to tackle in the next three minutes. That's a big one, but uh, I'm sure John or Sandra or even myself uh, and maybe some others on this call would love to uh, have a, a conscious capitalism uh, sidebar conversation. So, so be I sure. Will, I will join a session at uh, 9 p.m. or later that includes libations <laughs> with that question. I will join anything that somebody puts together. Um, Eric uh, Rins Whitmore, we all know Eric, we love Eric. And uh, Eric is doing some really good work with uh, Forward Cities, but um, he put in a wonderful resource that I encourage you to look at with some of our local partners, uh, Native uh, Women Lead and Zebras United. So be sure to take a look at some of that stuff in there. Again, the transcripts are gonna be online um, so that you will have a link to this. I just got to, you know, got to let Zoom process it and then I'll upload it to our website. Um, but uh, before we go, I'd like to pass it off to TJ because uh, we only have a couple minutes left and we kind of have a standard thank you wrap up uh, component that we do. So TJ, welcome back. Thank you. I think I, I'm pretty sure you kicked me out, Dan, and I had to crawl my way back, but you can't keep me down. Um, we go back and forth. It's fine. Uh, Joanna, you posted a great uh, sign up. So here's what here's what we do to end and celebrate action. Um, you introduce yourself at the front end of the meeting. Now uh, put yourself out there again, your business or idea, and an ask. So I'm looking for X, whether it's customers, partners, co-founders, um, people of knowledge, advice. Um, Post your business uh, and what you could use right here, right now. Maybe there, another connection is made and include contact info so that if somebody sees it and um, says, oh, I, I know somebody or I have that knowledge or, ooh, I, I want to talk more about that, provide that advice, you can follow up and do it. Um, and I'll just read, or, read them out as we, as we go here. So just to point out, uh, there is a link to sign up for the weekly resource wrap up, um, which is great and probably a great place to start back to the New Mexico Economic Development, their work of aggregation and, and uh, getting all these resources in play. Sign up for that. And then if you still have questions, obviously reach out uh, to the team there. Harold put the, the email address out, which is great. Um, Johanna herself is up for discussing needs and financing landscape for small businesses. So giving you the rundown of what's out there for your specific business. But as she said, it helps to hear what your business is, what you're trying to do to make the right connection. Genevieve, um, what you're working on Genevieve? We got contact info, but not the, what you're working on. So if you can include that. 
Um, that'd be fantastic. Maybe somebody sparks. Um, John says, feel free to email me about social entrepreneurship and B Corps. And he's John at Santa Fe innovates.com and uh, heard from um, his compatriot on the team that uh, things will be ramping up towards uh, for, for their program. So find out uh, might be timely for some of you who are right in the sweet spot for B Corp social entrepreneur business. So awesome. John Cole uh, of Muse Biz is looking for co-founders. All right. So check out Muse Biz. If that sparks a fancy, then reach out to Mr. Cole. I had the, pleasure, uh, the privilege of meeting him in Los Alamos. We did a lean startup boot camp up there and I've enjoyed his uh, company ever since. Uh, Eric with Forward Cities. I'd love to talk with folks who are working in food systems and food related entrepreneurship. Um, and that's fantastic because Eric's really connected in a cool regional national way. Um, and, uh, but heart, heart for New Mexico um, and it's where he lives. So got his contact info. Uh, Eva, the co-op catalyst. I swear it wasn't me. I didn't, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I, I, I had to cycle my Wi-Fi, but Eva's looking, doing legal or other questions about co-ops and yeah, co-op catalyst. That's the, the 10 minutes they had is uh, uh, just, a, just a smidge of what they can provide by way of knowledge and resources for anybody considering that. Uh, Ken with Jomo.health is looking to connect with home health nurses and therapists with his solution. So customer discovery and, uh, and the like through our Activate New Mexico program, fantastic. Kanani with Fruit Stand Technology is looking to connect with small businesses who need a website. Awesome, Kanani. Genevieve, thank you for getting back to us. Uh, she'd love to have a conversation about conscious money, investment, and social entrepreneurship. So great, I'm gonna put my um, email in here because I would like to have that conversation with you, Genevieve. And it is simply tjabqid.com. Um, there we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I had to scroll down. Richard Farmer is looking for founders, investors, and AR app wizards locally for B Corp startup called Strike AR. Um, if you got a website or a one pager you can link to so people know Strike AR, that'd be awesome, Richard. Otherwise, um, it is augmented reality. So uh, if that suits your, that, if that's exciting, reach out. Laura, very nice to meet everyone. Learning a lot. Like to know more about how to promote safety within business models. Safety within business models. Um, projects, projects, AFE Lab. I'm not, Project Safe Lab. There we go. <laughs> uh, reach out to Lori for that. Thank you, Lori. Laura. Uh, Rosalie Multari, welcome, good to see you again. We are developing a laser-based method of blood analysis and are seeking investment funding to build prototypes. We're very early stage. Um, Rosalie, if I didn't uh, reach out to you before, I'd love to talk with you. So you can hit me at my tj.abqid.com address. Patrick with New Mexico, uh, at New Mexico Kid at Gmail. Dot com. I am interested in learning about B Corps and co-ops in the non-software manufacturing industry. So good connection there to reach out to, uh, to John probably. Any information, says Kent, about existing mentor networks in New Mexico for Santa Fe Innovates. Uh, and Kent, you and Dan and I probably uh, talk uh, further collaboration with Activate, CNM Ingenuity, our network. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, Adam, and if you guys need to drop out, don't feel compelled to stay until I stop joining. But um, if you like, if you like this like me, you can feel free to stay until we're done. Adam, um, <clears throat> invite me out six feet or virtually to visit your business and learn about your workflow. I can learn a lot and maybe I'll be able to help you improve your systems. That's good. Adam at sparksflow.com and his phone number. Thank you for your email, just Richard. Tyler Hall at Strike Eagle Aviation is looking for investors in seed funding. Um, Tyler Hall, please reach out to me. We'll talk. 
if folks are interested in speaking at One Million Cups, which is now online, reach Eric or Adam uh, Rectal or sign up at one mcabq.com. I'm just going to plus one that real quick. One One Million Cups, a great welcoming, not too shark tanky community, but does make you elevate your game, get a presentation going, talk about your business, and get some real good advice in the process. So if you haven't uh, join that community every Wednesday at 9 a.m. That's a great, a great thing to do. First to just go attend and then, and then speak um, and get plugged in. Sandra McCardell, CCNM. We are building a list of resources for the cooperatives we work with. We need you. So if you're thinking about cooperatives, they want to know about you and uh, represent. So reach out to Sandra. Thank you again, Sandra, for being here. Uh, Marco with InBizWorks is a software platform for entrepreneurs and orgs that support those entrepreneurs. And he is looking for innovative entrepreneurial support organizations that are exploring ways to serve a wider audience. So that's Marco at InBizWorks.com. He's in our Activate New Mexico program, which is fantastic. I've gotten to know him very well and esteem him and all, the, all our activators highly. So thank you, Marco. Dave, we have not met, but Dave says he's a founder and CEO of High Country Air Service. Um, the ask is look for prospective clients who have or are interested in having their own airplane to support their business travel for free. Reach out to me. No, I'm adding that part because I would love that, but probably can't afford it. But if you are looking for your own airplane to support business travel, it can help the business find, acquire, and operate an airplane. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, Richard put the URL. Thank you. We do have a survey. That's the last ask. Um, if, if in the sea of uh, asks and things, you could please um, go to that URL link and tell us what worked and didn't about the session. Uh, that would really help us improve. Again, that's what Dan posted. That's our ask of, to bring this free session to you all, um, is that you return some value by helping us learn. Thank you for doing that. Finally, we're getting towards the end. Carter Hahn with Rerouted Co-op is looking for people who are involved in tech and the outdoors. Tech and the outdoors. Uh, that's a lot of people in New Mexico, by the way, Carter. So good, good starting the company here. Um, and Wellington will be collecting data for a research project called What's the Ideal Model of Social Enterprise in New Mexico? We'll be reaching out to ecosystem builders and social entrepreneurs. So Great Wellington, you met a few of them and got some contact info today. And uh, yeah, Eric, John, Sandra, um, all of us. So let us know what you're up to by emailing us and whatnot. Do the survey, do good things. Uh, one last thank you to John, Sandra, Eva, and Johanna for joining us, spending their a valuable time with us in illuminating and the pathways towards um, alternative business models. And it's a great community to now be a part of. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting this. Thank you. Really Our a pleasure. Interaction. And again, thank you so much. Uh, I will send out a follow-up email with those slide decks and, and they will be CC'd. So if you are interested in social impact, uh, B corporations, co-op resources that the state uh, provides, please reach out to them directly. I'm sure they would love to connect with you and uh, provide you with, uh, with resources and connections and let's grow New Mexico. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay engaged, stay active. Thanks everyone. See you soon. Go team. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.